Um, my report is on the passion flower. Um, I had to pick a wildflower and I picked the passion flower. Okay. I can see it. Okay. Um, about the passy flower, there's 550 species. Um, and the genus name is passy florence. Um, they're mostly tendril bearing vines with some being shrubs or trees. And the vines provide food for wildlife in the form of fruit, nectar, pollen, and leaves, as well as offer shelter from predators and the elements. And here's a, it's up on a trellis here. Now, in the history of the passion flower, uh, Melody gave some of this with the, um, when she did the heritage plants. So it literally means the passion flower and it originated in Brazil and Argentina. Um, it refers to the Christian passion of Jesus and the Christian theology, mostly during the crucifixion. And it was in the 15th century when the Spanish Christian missionaries uh, visited and noted the unique physical structures of the plant. And they particularly noticed the number of various flowered parts. Okay. The septals represent the 10 faithful apostles, and that excludes Judas the betrayer and St. Peter the denier. Um, the three stigmas, can you see my arrow when I do that? Um, represents the three nails. There was one in each hand and one through the feet. Uh, the five anthers represent the five wounds, and there were four by nails and one by lance. The blue and white color of many species re represents heaven and purity, and the pointed tips of the leaves represent the holy lance. The ovary represents a hammer or holy grail, and the filaments, the crown of thorns, and they can number more than a hundred. The fruit of the passion flower, uh, it's been called an apricot, but it's also called a maypot. And a lot of people know this uh, flower by maypop because when you step on the fruit, it makes a popping noise. It has a thick skin and a purple fruit, and it gets wrinkly when it's ripe. Um, down here is a picture of uh, the um, unripe fruit. It's green, and then it turns purple as it ripens. It is edible, either fresh or cooked. It has numerous seeds, and it... Uh, like I say, it will fall to ground when it's ripe. Many commercial juices are used to make uh, with the passion flower, and they use it as an ingredient. And so then I thought, well, is that really true? So I looked it up, and um, gosh, Welsh's has a, a, a juice with it. Um, the LaCroix, the, the those sparkling water drinks, they have a passion fruit drink. There's fruit smoothies. Um, there's jellies and juices. Um, Hawaiian Sun has a, a tropical drink with the ingredient. Um, and then this woman online uh, from Brazil had a recipe where you take um, five to seven passion fruit and you take a, 10 cups of sugar and a quart of water and you mix them all up in the blender and then you strain the seeds. And she said it's full of vitamin C and it helps you to sleep. Um, the, uh, the fruit's about a size of a hen's egg. Okay, some of the first medical uses. Um, passion fruit has a high medical value. The Cherokee used the root as a poultice on boils and other inflammations. And they also uh, mixed up and dipped a warm solution of the root extract and put in the ear for ear eggs. In Europe, extracts of the dry plant were used to soothe anxiety, promote sleep, and lower blood pressure. And here are some of the health benefits of the passion flower. Um, it helps cope with feelings of stress and anxiety. It promotes sleep. It lowers blood pressure. It helps with ADHD. It helps with fibromyalgia, relieves opiate withdrawal. 
and the chemical in the flowers have a sleep inducing and muscle relaxant effects. Um, and basically until 1978, it was approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, they took it off the market at that time because they did not submit, uh, uh, the manufacturers didn't submit enough evidence of its safety and effectiveness. Uh, at that time, they were giving it uh, actually as a pre-op medicine about 30 minutes before people went to surgery. It would help them relax before surgery. Um, they also gave it for anxiety and the dose was 400 milligrams twice a day. And now, um, even though it's not uh, approved by the food and drug, you can get it um, over the counter, um, like as a herbal medicine. And here's one of the advertisements for uh, the passion flower. And it says it induces sleep and relaxation and reduces anxiety. And it shows that you can make it in a, a tea or elixir um, and brew it into a warm infusion. And it's, it's, it lowers the brain activity, uh, induces, uh, makes you sleepy and lessens symptoms of drug withdrawal. So you can go online and um, I did look up, there were several um, different um, makes of uh, medicines by the, uh, the, the, the different manufacturers. Walgreens even has one that you can send for online that has passion flower in that helps promote sleep. And, and um, it's really interesting when you get into it, how many uh, people actually use it. Um, to grow a passion flower, you start by seed. They do bloom from May to September. And as I said, there are 550 species. And here are some of the colors. I mean, the one I'm familiar with is the purple down in the left-hand corner, but they are red, they're blue, they're white. Um, they just come in a, a big variety of colors. Uh, they're grown in zone six to 10, depending on the species, but some can actually grow in uh, zones five to 11. And they look like a tropical plant, but they can grow almost anywhere. In fact, you can you see them here on the side of the road. Um, they like a soil, soil pH of 6.1 to 7.5, and they require full to partial sun. They're extremely attractive to butterflies and other, other pollinators, such as bees, bats, wasps, or honey, hummingbirds. The vines of a passion flower can grow to 20 feet or more in a year. Some type of support is needed to, for, to grow the vine. And this is a, an example of a commercial grower of the passion flower. Uh, they can become invasive in warmer climates. And in some places there are restrictions about planting them. It's kind of like our honeysuckle. Um, there's some places you just don't want them. In conclusion, um, I hope you enjoyed the report. This is Tennessee State Wildflower. And when I first saw it in the fields of our home, I thought it was the weed, but I do appreciate its beauty and its versatility.